Now these sky blue crystals might look cool, but they're filthy, dirty, and not pure enough. Today, I'm going to take this contaminated copper sulfate and turn it into pure transparent crystals worthy of a chemistry lab, and I'm aiming for a purity of at least 99.1%. So I think it's time to get to work through a process that somehow became really labor intensive. And trust me when I say this, but it went horribly wrong, like none of it was predictable. This is half a kilo of cupric sulfate, aka copper 2 sulfate, or 500 grams of it. And our first step was to dissolve it in a ton of water in order to make a saturated solution. This will come in handy when I do the next step. I mean, take a look at this. This is only about 300 grams in a beaker that I measured out. I then started pouring a lot of water into this 600 ml beaker, and according to the research I did, 2 kilos of copper sulfate pentahydrate should be soluble in just 1 liter of water at 100 C. So this much water should be enough. I then cranked up the heat and waited. Well, as you'll see in a minute, weird insoluble solids will be in our solution. Also you might be asking, this is lab grade so why is it impure? Frankly, I don't know. This was even like 5 times the regular price. As you can see here, it was taking forever to dissolve because all of it was just sitting at the bottom. And at the time when I filmed the video, I didn't know that the weird insoluble things were impurities. I thought I just somehow messed up my calculations and didn't add enough water. So what I did was I, well, added some more water, unfortunately making the solution unsaturated now. I transferred everything into a larger beaker and then rinsed the beaker with some more water to really make sure everything came over. Now after adding in the water, I aggressively stirred it to make sure no more chunks were left at the bottom. But I mean, although the blue color was on point, it was still opaque. So I thought of other solutions, or should I say excuses. I thought, maybe it needs some more water, so I dumped some of it into another jar and diluted the solution even more. At this point, I didn't have any idea on what amount of water I used. It was such a big combined mess. After pondering for a bit longer, I thought, maybe it just needs some time, so I patiently waited for a few hours for it to fully dissolve. When I came back, well, I was met with an even more unpleasant sight. It was now apparently not only opaque, but green as well. I mean, it's so murky you can't even tell it apart from swamp water. I don't know if the green was caused by the heating or something, but I know I just need to remove it. Also guys, let me know what you think it is. I'm not 100% sure, but it might be some kind of iron junk or something. Now after letting this large beaker settle for a bit, you can see some white solids collecting on the bottom as well, which I again have no idea why they are there. I then felt like just dumping the rest of the two bottles of copper 2 sulfate into it. I have no idea why. What's the only way to get rid of it? That's right, filtration. So I got one of my favorite pieces of glassware, this fritted funnel, and I decided to vacuum filter it. After pouring in the solution, you can see how it removed some of the green murky solids, a lot of it staying on top, but much of it still made it through, probably due to the vacuum that I pulled, leading to the solution being still slightly contaminated. I decided to just go with it for now, but in hindsight, perhaps pulling a vacuum was not the smartest idea. Gravity filtration could have completely prevented the problem of it getting through. Essentially, after passing all of the solution through a filter, I then transferred it into this huge plastic bin with an ice bath under it to hopefully do a recrystallization. Looking back, I don't even know what I was thinking. I mean, there's still clearly so much excess water in there. And yep, as you might have guessed, after leaving it there for two days, not only did no crystals form, but the greenish yellow impurities started to settle to the bottom again. You can still see the amount that made it through. Now I was quite disappointed because it meant I had to basically refilter everything, either patiently with a very fine gravity filtration or passing it through vacuum filtration multiple times. I decided to go through the second route and, well, as you can see here, when trying to transfer the liquid, I spilled some. <laughs> yeah, my yield is going to suffer. Anyways, here you can see me spending half a day passing it all through and uh, I realized it wasn't going to work. So back to plan A, which is to gravity filter it. So what I did is I did a gravity filtration through a vacuum filtration. I know, sorry, this is so cursed, but it ended up taking so long because of how slowly it drips. This is a downside to getting something of really high purity though, so I accepted it. It was coming through much, much clearer than it was before, so that's some good progress. While that was happening, I remembered the fact that I still had too much water, so I got to boiling it away on the other half of the solution that was not currently being filtered. 
These two steps were done simultaneously, by the way. Also, this was off camera, but I accidentally spilled a bit more of my solution while moving stuff around. I know, silly me. Anyways, you can see how clear the solution coming over via gravity is. I don't know if it's just me, but it looks kind of nostalgic, like that 2010's Minecraft water. Now that the first part of the solution coming over was looking nice and blue, it was time to pour the second part which I was boiling, through the filter as well. Here's where I made a crucial mistake. This was the boiled mixture, meaning it was pretty saturated. So after leaving my lab for a few hours, when I came back, the entire thing has crystallized into a brick. Oh. This is like, horrible and I mean it. I tried prying it and breaking it up, washing it multiple times, nothing worked. It was just completely stuck onto the freighted funnel. Well, this was a last resort, but I guess we're going to have to use some heat with a blowtorch. This would hopefully free up the chunk. I mean, it looks like it's working until... Yeah, it cracked. More of my solution was pouring out again. And okay, I know I am notorious for this. While Heisenberg is breaking bad, I'm literally breaking glass. This is like the fourth time, I swear. I was extra careful this time as well, in fact, making sure to spread the flame around it. But I guess I should just use a heat gun in the future, as Dangerous Lab proposed. Now, after filtering it through paper towels, coffee filters as well, none of them were fine enough to trap the particles. And with no fritted funnel, I guess that's that. This means I'm going to have to do what I really didn't want to do. A recrystallization with insoluble impurities still in it. I went ahead and boiled down the total solution. And the fact that it was still so opaque made me uneasy about going for a recrystallization. Anyways, I thought this was going to take hours, but it ended up being a lot faster than that, actually. And when I came back, it had unfortunately overboiled and bumped, splattering copper two sulfate everywhere. Like, it couldn't go worse than this, but it was 2am nonetheless. So after adding in some more water and this time boiling it down to the right consistency and monitoring it closely this time, I can then quickly remove it off the heat, let it cool in room temp for a few minutes, and then put it in an ice bath. What we're doing here, or at least trying to do here, is a lab technique for purifying solids called the recrystallization, where the solid crystals, which originally had impurities incorporated into it, were allowed to dissolve and then reform slowly. By putting it in ice water, the solubility decreases drastically, and as you can kind of see here, the copper sulfate starts crashing out immediately. According to thermodynamics, a pure crystal lattice is favorable and currently being formed because it is lower in free energy, thus leaving the impurities in solution. After waiting a night and scraping out the pure parts and doing my best to leave the solid impurities earlier at the bottom, then rinsing the crystals with acetone, this is what I was left with. Honestly, it's not perfect or, I mean, even great at all because my yield was only around 60%. This was due to the losses throughout the process, which could have easily been prevented, but mistakes were made and to be fair, I was pretty distracted as well with the building of the fume hood and other projects that were going on. So I was relatively busy while making this video in the background. Now I'll be using this pure copper sulfate to do other cool projects in the future, and leave any suggestions or guesses as to what I'm going to do in the comments. Again, I really want to thank my Patreon supporters for making these projects more affordable, and I will provide behind the scenes, early access, shoutouts, and more. If you would like to support a high school student like me, just $3 will go a long way in helping this channel to continue providing quality and educational chem content. Anyways, thank you for watching till the end and please consider subscribing by clicking the subscribe button below.